Abby's having too much fun just setting up the course. <laughs> she put <laughs> broken wiener dog in. It lost its leg in the mountain. <laughs> Help me. Oh, okay. This has turned into a rescue mission now. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> crystal giant egg rock. Man, that looks good. That is massive too. Can you guys even tell? <laughs> I think that's as big as my X1C. Wow. Okay, let's pull it off the printer. I got to get more going. We need a whole crawler course. Wow. Here is the biggest I could possibly make it on a standard 256 print bed. I mean, guys, look at the massive size difference that is so crazy look at that <laughs> wow <laughs> i like this filament oh that's fun that's a fun way to do the rocks that's cool wow the shop just got a massive upgrade and i cannot wait to show you guys what we're doing because we're going from printing 3d crawler course like this for our mini crawlers this is a 24th scale axial to an absolute behemoth of a piece like this maxed out <laughs> for a giant 10th scale rc car we can now print things going from 24th scale all the way up to 10th scale rcs just with the newest addition to our print farm that is all thanks to our brand new h2s bamboo lab massive 3d printer it is now their biggest volume print bed in the fleet and let me tell you even just getting it through the doorways was a bit of a challenge because this thing is an absolute beast this real sized heavy duty low poly rock that i'm holding came fresh off that print bed and believe it or not that used almost an entire spool i think i could make some adjustments and lower the infill some and possibly my outer walls too but that ate up almost an entire spool i've never printed anything that actually used up that much filament and this big in one go before but it's extremely exciting because not only can I print bigger rocks for a crawling course, I can do some other very real world examples like taking my snow skis for my Aero Scout that I printed. And I actually designed, because it very much needed, a larger snow ski on the front with a little rubber band shock there. Now my limiting factor when I did this was the size of my printers. I could only choose to do this airplane, being a bit of a smaller one compared to some others that I have, because I needed snow skis that could fit this plane. And believe it or not, these are even considered a little bit on the small side for this plane. I wish I could have taken this front ski and scaled it up a little bit more. But now, with the brand new H2S and all of its gigantic glory i can scale this up significantly check this out this is such a cool example to show you guys but these are the same rocks they're the same stl l file just scaled up this is stretched out to the max on a traditional 256 by 256 by 256 uh rock that i could make and this is the biggest that I could stretch the same rock to, which is actually even hard to hold on to because it's so much heavier, <laughs> on the brand new H2S. Side by side, it's kind of insane to see these next to each other. I am beyond hyped and pumped about the brand new H2S because it's doing things that even my X1C cannot do. Now mine has the AMS2 Pro, which in and of itself is very impressive. In case you're unfamiliar, that has the ability to dry filament, which is really cool. But one of my favorite features is the scale, which you can't see while that's printing, but it lets you know, maybe we can, maybe we can. Now on the home screen, I'll show you with another shot. It shows you how much filament by weight is left in each spool, which I think is amazing. Uh, one of the biggest, coolest features that I love is the vent built into the top of this. So as you guys can see, I'm printing a PLA Dragon right now with this printer, and I have to leave the door cracked so it doesn't get too hot in there for PLA. You know, a print bed like that can just stay opened and exposed like the A1s. And of course, the P1S printing something right now, I've got my door cracked and it just kind of swings around and is a little bit of a nuisance. But this guy, the door is fully closed and sealed, which I love because we have this vent 
that automatically has a temperature control on the inside to let you know when it needs to open and close. Also, I believe the H2D has this, but I'm not totally positive about it, so don't kill me <laughs> if I'm wrong. But this LED light that you're seeing here actually progresses along the bottom of the bed when your print is progressing. So it's just a really cool progress bar that adds an extra cool factor to your printer as well. Um, check out the lights too. So we have a really nice bright LED bar on the top there and on this side. So we've got two bright LED bars in there while this thing is slinging the PLA. Absolutely love this. We also have the ability to do laser functionality with this printer. Mine is not set up to do that right now, but it's something that I might like to tamper with later because the world of RC can take advantage of balsa cutting and engraving. For example, check out that plane right there. That motor mount is made out of balsa wood and oftentimes the firewall, which motors are mounted to inside the plane, are generally 99% of the time made out of wood as well. So plans to do some of that and other projects in the future too. I am just blown away by the print bed size, which is 340 by 320 by 340. It is impressive. We also have a vent system built into the back of that. And I don't know if you guys noticed the keen eye, but when that screen goes to sleep, you open this door, it pops awake, which I think is a really cool added feature as well. We're also going with full scale, full size USB as opposed to micro USB. So that's kind of an interesting choice. And guys, just look at these two printers side by side. If you didn't know any better, you would think that's the X1C and that was some different small like A1 mini with an enclosure or something. But no, that's my X1C that looks like a tiny toy now compared to the amazing H2S. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Crystal giant egg rock. Man, that looks good. That is massive too. Can you guys even tell? <laughs> I think that's as big as my X1C. Wow. Okay, let's pull it off the printer. I got to get more going. We need a whole crawler course. Wow. Wow. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, you think that is going to be good for the 10th scale crawlers? That is amazing. <laughs> Here is the biggest I could possibly make it on a standard 256 print bed. I mean, guys, look at the massive size difference. That is so crazy. Look at that. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> I like this filament. Oh, that's fun. That's a fun way to do the rocks. That's cool. Wow, all this will be linked in the description box, the stuff that I'm using. Man, okay. Oh my gosh, there it is. Oh, that's so cool. We'll put it up against the 10th scale. Man, that is sweet. By the way, I adjusted the infill on this so I wouldn't use as much and it's a drastic difference when you're printing stuff this big. I went from 15% to 9% infill. You know, this is basically just sitting there with RC vehicles crawling on it. So when I dropped that, it went from like 1100 uh, grams of filament to 950. I mean, that's, that's a 10% difference. So pretty sweet. I thought this looked really cool for my third set of rocks. You can see the uh, outline of each rock. The platform is built. It just looks really neat. I love this. <laughs> the H2S is killing it. So good. Okay, my fifth and final giant rock just finished and I wanted to show you guys something really stinking cool. Not just the fact that it is a massive crawler course piece, but I wanted you to see this. I did this whole giant print in uh, 11 hours, which is not bad considering how massive it is, it only took 649 grams. Now, if you were to take this file and just print by the creator, scaled up to maximize the space on here, it would actually have taken about 1100 grams. So over a spool of filament, because they come in one kilogram spools or a thousand grams. So what I did was adjusted my layers on the outside to 
instead of a five layer outer shell, I just did three. And instead of a 15% infill, I did 8% infill. That alone changed from using over a spool of filament to almost half. It helped me save close to half of my filament with just a few small modifications. I probably could have gotten away with even less filament. So just because it's a giant print doesn't mean you have to use an entire spool or so for one big print. Very cool. All right, this is our newest batch of rocks off of the H2S for our giant 10 scale crawlers in comparison to the others. But the cool thing is we don't just have one. You can probably see the second one peeking from behind. We have two that was able to print off of one roll of filament. That is because we made some adjustments to the, just this, not the printer itself. Rather than having a 15% infill on like five outer top layers, I adjusted these to have 8% infill. So we were able to pull off like 400 grams. We cut it in half and that way we could print two of these off of one spool of filament. So the bigger rocks were eating up an entire spool. I thought that was really cool that we were able to stretch the filament further. And even though these are massive and do take up more filament to print bigger things, there are methods that we can use to reduce the amount of filament but still get the same quality of print. What is this? Slacker. Yeah, that's supposed to be making something for you right now, actually, but you're helping me with this. So when we're done, we'll queue it up. <laughs> All right, the final piece for our crawler track, our indoor crawler track is complete. I did a lot of green because I just love that color for like a crawler course. And I think we're gonna dub this course. It matches. Yeah, that was part of it too. I don't know <laughs> if we're gonna drive this one, but for size comparison, this is gonna be really cool. Uh, and just to show it off, I think we're gonna name this indoor crawler course Dragon Mountain. Do you like that? I like Dragon Mountain. And to anyone out there that's watching that maybe will do a crawler course, maybe not, but loves to print big things in general, I couldn't resist, I'm sorry. I know I was supposed to just do RC related stuff for this video, but come on, this can ride my 10th scale. This dominates my 10th scale vehicles. It's just a massive, awesome, giant dragon scaled up to 185%. It's amazing. Here, for size. Look at the RC shelf lately. It's uh, gotten taken over by prints. <laughs> Come here, real fast. I just want to show, this is what it's all about. It's this video, we're gonna have some RC fun of course, but this is size comparison video. Like X1C. I, yeah, that's the H2S. X1C. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Woo. Like okay. massive size difference, you guys. I mean, it's huge. It's just a little baby. Scaled up to 185%. This is crazy. In case I have company over. Ta da! <laughs> Actually, it's a lot better than that. But just here, I wanted you guys to see this, okay? This is an actual exact size comparison. So, what the X1C was able to print was this, which is awesome. Love it. But this is off of the H2S, the exact same file, scaled up as big as I could fit it on the crawler course. Mm -hmm. I mean, if mm -hmm. nothing else, you can take your 24th scale crawlers and now have a ridiculous crawling course. I didn't even consider that. I was just aiming for 10th scale, but now we can take the smallest pieces for the big course and make a really good challenging small crawler course too. So that's amazing. I can't believe I actually own a printer now that is capable of doing huge 10th scale prints and even larger accessories for bigger vehicles than that. Really, the sky is the limit with this thing. I might even test its capabilities and print my very first RC plane with that, but scale it up to be even bigger than some of the models that exist currently. What we're showing you in this video is just the tip of the iceberg to be able to scale things up even larger. Now, another thing too that we may not even be considering, although the print bed and volume is huge, just think about if you're the type of person that makes things to sell, you can now fit even more of those things, or maybe you make things to give away, we can fit even more of those things on our print bed. So maybe you're making new wheels, you can just put even more of those on your print bed now. If you wanna pick one of these up for yourself or anything else in the bamboo lineup, or if you just have questions about it, you can let me know in the comments below. But if you're in the market for one, we'll have them linked in the description box below. 
and maybe you just need to do a restock on your filament. Anytime you use one of our links to buy a printer for yourself or maybe you're just restocking filament, it does help our channel and our family at no extra cost to you. Guys, I wanna say a massive thanks to God for blessing us with the time to jump in front of the camera. <laughs> I'm printing golf balls for a friend, trying out little airless golf balls. I thought that was pretty cool and I just finished. But I wanna say a massive thanks to our Patreon supporters for supporting everything we do. We couldn't do it without your amazing support. And if you're into 3D printing content and you wanna see what it can do paired with the world of RC, we'll have a hand-picked video popping up right about now. Thanks for watching, we'll see you there. As Abby would say, there she is, bye. <laughs>